Hello again, everybody. It's time for another Fast Sounds edit, so I hope everyone's doing well and buckled in for some fun little edits that are happening this evening. So I've been noticing a little bit of a trend lately in terms of a lot of squirrels appearing on Twitter, and it's getting me a little bit jealous. So even though my big boy lens is a little bit of out, out of action at the moment, I don't see why I can't dip into the archives and find an older squirrel picture to edit. So what have we got today? Let's have a look. So this picture of a unassuming squirrel was taken at Sherwood Forest, um, which is quite close to me. Lovely place to visit, and the best thing is lots of woodland, lots of grey squirrels. Unfortunately no red squirrels because it's not Cumbria, it's not north. Um, just, gray, uh, just the grey squirrels. But I don't see a problem with that. They're still quite fun fairy creatures, even though they have um, a slight bad rep, maybe. Maybe it's warranted, who knows. So let's dive straight in um, and see how we get on. So for me, this image is a little bit underexposed. Um, I think I was trying to keep the shutter speed up because he was scampering across the fence. And so this is going to be quite weird because um, all of my pictures so far have been flowers, butterflies, kind of, um, I want to say inanimate objects flowers count as inanimate let me know but um, I've not had any kind of like live in animals or people um, I don't do many people photography um, people scare me but I'm curious how this is gonna work because obviously there's a color that everyone associates with a squirrel um, and what it looks like so if I start shifting those colors too far is it gonna look weird do I care yeah we'll find out so I've dropped the temperature, I've increased that exposure to combat a little bit. And let's get those whites up, blacks. Let's get those down, texture. So you can see, as soon as I come into this image, there's quite a lot of noise in it. And actually I'm gonna just drop that clarity a little bit. No other reason, just to soften it on this first one. And I'm gonna just add, no, we're not going to add gradients just yet. Vibrance, we're going to push that up. But I am going to put in a nice curve. And I'm just going to warm up the shadows. Just a touch. Is it looking a bit weird so far? Yes. Does it look like a squirrel? It's shaped like a squirrel. Those greens and those aquas in the background. Let's try and bring those down a little bit. Oops, wrong button. Jumping ahead of myself there, getting into the black and white before we've got to the end. Okay, so I'm not gonna try and create color masks. So I just want to have a couple of opposite masks, um, a couple of gradients here. This is what I quite like doing my flower pictures of just kind of adding lights at the forefront and the back. And so those shadows, I did want to try and increase a little bit. And we're going to reverse so the highlights were pushing more into the blues. too much with it at the moment is the contrast between the screen background and the um, little scroll. So I really want to try and take that out without... there we go. Kind of 
kind of like seem like there's too much of a vignette on it. Well, I say too much of a vignette. I don't want to seem like there's got the halo, like you can really see it. Um, because that's the key thing I'm going to put in. Quite heavy vignette on it. Just soften those blues up a little bit. Maybe I don't go too heavy on that temperature. There we go. So I want more of a silver squirrel rather than a blue squirrel. So kind of that moonlight casting appearance on it. I think I'm good with that. I think that's a good image. Let me know down below if you think it's good if you think it's bad we'll have a look at the before so there we go our flat image no changes and here's our first edit what do you think image number two here we go so bright colors exposure yes want to bring those up contrast Randomly mashing keys on the keyboard never works well for me. Contrast can come up. Let's get that fur going. Highlights, bring that back down. And shadows. Actually, yeah, let's uh, let's crush those shadows. And blacks, let's get them down. Similar. Very light escape. Maybe too much contrast. Yeah, I think like maybe there. There's a point where I, I go too high, and I think that's looking a bit too unnatural. I've kind of done something bad to it. So actually, I think I'm just gonna lower it a little bit now. I've seen that. Do, do, do. So let's get those hues, and we're gonna push more towards those kind of golden colors. Am I trying to change my grey grace the words? Am I trying to change my grey squirrel into a red squirrel? I don't think so. Because they have you ever seen a red squirrel? They are so adorable. So let's bring those yellows back down a bit. We've still got those nice hues. Greens, I'm not a fan of the greens in the background. There's a time and a place for greens. This is not it. Just gonna put the tiniest, tiniest color gradient on there, heading towards the blues on the shadows, oranges on the highlights. Let's just put them on. So there we go. Not too bad with the noise in terms of it. it's quite heavy. It, this was on my D7200, um, which, in my opinion, is quite a noisy camera. People will tell me otherwise, but obviously, the ISO is quite high as well because I want to get that shutter speed. So, here's the before, here's the after. I'm gonna leave that one in terms of um, vignettes, I think, um, and we're gonna go into image number three. So while I'm working on this one, if you do like what I'm doing here, um, if you think it's interesting, please remember to subscribe. There's a new video every week. I try and get one out every week, um, as long as I've got different subjects to keep going. But subscribe, hit the bell icon, get notified when a new video comes out. So yeah, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to keep this one quite natural. Um, let's put the clarity up a little bit on this one. So, tone curve. I'm going to go very, very strong. On this. And then we're going to hit it with those gradients. And I did quite like the gradients on the first image, so I'm going to replicate those quite quickly. 
say gradient masking. I like the masking on those first images. Bring that over a bit, and let's get the radial. So similar kind of vignette that we got in the first one. There we go. And what I'm also going to do is add another radial gradient. This is just going to be around the scroll. We're just going to pump the clarity up with that scroll on its own. Nothing else. We're just going to try and bring that fur out a lot more. Okay, color wise. We want to push those oranges. Yellows, just a touch towards the orange. And we're just trying to kind of like, I really like this detail on the face um, and the foot that's coming out. Almost like a proud lion looking for its prey, which in this case is a nut. It's always a nut with squirrels. Greens, down again. So subtle on color grading. And then we're just gonna have that over yet. Okay, so before and after. Final image, black and white. Let's do this. So straight in there. Exposure. Let's get that up because I think it is quite low. Contrast. I actually can really pump the contrast on this and separate it from the background, give it some depth. And what I might do before I even play with anything else. So this is going to be a bit of the opposite of the last one. Um, so we invert that. And we're going to take the exposure down. I'm going to take the clarity down on anything. Dehaze, stay where you are. Texture though. Let's take a move. Why not? And then we can bring that up a little bit on the image as a whole. Could be selective, but the very subtlest of S curves. So generally I always put an S curve on my image these days. Um, I might do a tutorial on tone curves if anyone wants them. It's somewhere that I'm still learning and always learning. Um, and I would say only in this past year I kind of like feel like I've been really editing and getting to grips with it. Um, but I can pass on the information that I know if anyone wants to. So how's this looking? Little Mr. Chewy Cheeks there. Let's go towards the balloon, just in the shadows. So I quite like that darken effect. Oh, actually, do we get? Yay! I did think. I was just thinking before I moved on that we can actually get this nice kind of like copper tone to it, um, and it's very subtle. So if you look at like that's it off, that's it on. So you, if you didn't know it was there, you probably wouldn't notice it, but. For me, that's that's nice. I like that. Let's do those profile corrections. And do I want a vignette? Yes, just a little one. Okay, that's image number four. There's the before. There's the after. Let me know what you think down below. Okay, so I'll put the images on the screen in a moment. But before I go for the evening, um, what I just wanted to show everyone, if you didn't see my previous video on how to import, export um, Lightroom presets, so something that I've set up for those that are interested. Um, if you like the Fire Styles edits and you want to use the presets yourself in something in some of your own photography and give them a whirl, I have set up a Patreon. Um, there's a couple of accounts, so show your support. It's just literally you like what I'm doing. Yeah, sign up. Send me some money. 
can make me happy. Um, but likewise, if you want to try and use the presets and so each month I'm making four new four styles videos, off the back of them you will get four edits, off the, each edit I will create a preset, so that equals 16 presets a month. Um, if you want to see those edits, you want to see those presets, join that tier and you will get access to those presets using your own photos and see what they're all about. So as always, thanks again for watching. If you did like it, please remember to subscribe. I'll put the images on the screen now. Let me know what your favorite is in the comments and I really do love the feedback, so keep it coming. Until next time, see you later everyone.